man. But what went into you guys' uh, winning the scrimmage uh, on, on Sunday? Um, just executing better, taking care of the football. Um, we've known that when we do all our 11 jobs as one, we know what our offense could be like, and it's a lead. So, you know, I feel like we really clicked this scrimmage. Do you feel like there's a, a, a strong sense of what your offense is when it is playing well and, like, what you guys do the best? Yeah, uh, just when we all play our do our job, especially as O line. You know, that's my focus as O line. When we play five as one, and we, you know, our double teams are good. We're you know protecting the QB. We are gonna play good offense. So, how would you how would you assess the the difference between scrimmage number one and number two on the offensive line for you guys? Um, came out with more energy. Uh, we got movement off the ball. We kept the QB clean for the most part, and just. I think we maintained the energy more. You know, I feel like we started out a little flat, one, and we got into a little hole. But this time we started off hot and we kept it going through the whole scrimmage. So. He was saying he thought that you guys had installed a lot over the past few weeks. Can you give us an idea of like how big of a figure the playbook was when the last scrimmage did? Um. Yeah, it's. We installed a little bit. You know, for us it's not as bad, but you know we got everything in so we could finally just like learn it all and process it all. So we were still going from scrimmage one, we were still in so on. So scrimmage two, we had everything in and we were just, we were set. So we could learn that and actually practice it all. So. With, with, with a brand new offense, <coughs> I'm sure there were growing pains in the spring, maybe even some in the beginning of this camp. Have you seen them disappear? And in, in what way are they disappearing? 100%, I feel like we're making less rookie mistakes. So you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, what, you know, what year you are in. We all came into this offense and we were learning anew. So uh, going into our fall camp, uh, we had a basis of it. Some things changed a little bit, but uh, we just, once you learn it, then mistakes go down. You quit making some of the lesser mistakes, like the, the more basic mistakes. And some stuff comes along the way that you didn't see coming and then you fix it once you see it on film. What have been the biggest, what were the biggest challenges for you just switching offensive line coaches, switching offensive coordinators, playbook, everything? Uh, learning new language and then just learning how Coach Bell and Darbo wanted us to play. Like just, you know, O-line's kind of the same no matter where you go. It's just the f techniques that you play at and then, you know, obviously the new speed of the game. But it's still coming off the ball, hitting someone and protecting the QB. It's just we had to see how we wanted us to do it. What's Darbo like transitioning from what he's teach you in the classroom to teach you on the field? Like, how, how, how quickly does he relay, like, the specifics of, hey, I, we, we need to get this down for technique? Darbo's really good at coaching on the field. Um, he just, he'll get you real quick because we're trying to move fast, so it's hard. But um, he'll scream something at you, and then once we get in the film room, he already knows, like, once he sees the play pop up before it even starts, he already knows. He'll ask you a question like, "What happened?" So he has a really good memory of what. I'm sure they watch a lot, but is that very knows. is that very helpful for you, like to like quickly assess what you need to fix? Yeah, 100. percent Just uh, knowing what I need to fix. So even if he yells something real quick after the play, hearing that, I'm like, okay, like now I can focus on that. So it helps out a lot. Last year, though, uh, you guys averaged like 100, a little over 100 yards per game rushing. Is that how much of a focus has it been in terms of the ground game? Uh, it's, ground game is very important, especially for O-line. So that's one of the things Darbo really emphasizes is that we have to be able to establish the run. Because if you can establish the run, then they have to focus on that. And that's when you could throw the ball when they try to pack the box. So um, the run game is very important. At what point did you guys on the offensive line get properly conditioned to keep up with the pace of the offense? Um, just throughout the whole summer, you know, there wasn't really a single point. But Coach Stack and his crew does an amazing job of trying to adjust and adapting us to what the new offense is like. But, I mean, there's football is a very physical game and it's a taxing game. So you don't really get into shape until you get those first, like, couple practices out the way because there's not much things that you can do to stimulate football conditioning. Obviously, you're kind of focused on the offensive line, but what are, what are you seeing from those those Western Carolina transfers like Poppy and Desmond Reed? What, what have they brought to the offense? They're explosive and they're leaders because they've been in the offense for a couple years. They know what they're doing. They've helped out a lot with the uh, you know the guys that are here, or other new guys that came in. So 
Uh, I'm really excited to see what they can do. I love all of our skill guys, and uh, I'm excited for them. With, with Eli under center, do you guys see him being a little bit more mobile than Nate is? Uh, that's not really something I focus on, but they're both really good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't really focus on that. I just do my job. Where was the team? Where was the team? Where the offensive line dinner? Did you see how much how much y'all ran up at the tab? Uh, no, I didn't look at the tab this year. <laughs> I got I got out of there. Looking at what you were able to do last year, or some things you were focusing on this offseason coming into fall camp. Me as a yeah. player of the team. Uh, last year I kind of was bouncing around everywhere. I was trying to find my position, see if I could find my place on the O line, and uh, obviously Mac and Salvas went down. I found my way into right tackle. So this year. I had a whole spring and fall camp and summer to just focus on training at right tackle. So I think that's helped me out a lot just to clean up some technical issues. And I felt really pretty good. What is it like running the ball in this style of offense? And how effective do you guys think you could be running the ball with this? Uh, it's just, it's quick. We're trying to get to the line, maybe catch them off guard so they can't set up something on the defense. So uh, it's just, it's a lot quicker. You know, we're going to be snapping the ball faster. We're not going to be waiting until 30 seconds left on the clock every time to snap the ball. So I think that's going to help us out a lot. What's the challenge like for you guys? You run a lot of RPO to try to you know keep people, but like knowing when to push up field as run blockers because traditionally you know you're looking to drive your man as far as you can, but you know, if you want to keep the passing option, you can't always do that. Yeah, that's just something. If you take someone down the field like that and they end up throwing the ball and we get a flag, that's just something you have to accept okay. sometimes. Like, it's it's good that you just knock someone back that far, but it's a curse at the same time with the offense. But it's a pretty rare thing to happen. Coach Narduzzi said this morning that uh, the offense was a lot cleaner, uh, only one penalty in the ones and the twos in the scrimmage on Sunday. Um, what did you guys work on this week to allow you to be uh, – a little less, I guess, a lot cleaner of a scrimmage? Uh, we really focused on communication. I think that was something that, like I said, we started off slow in the scrimmage, and I think we had a couple communication errors, and just we nipped that in the bud right away. We didn't want that because, you know, last year we had, on the line, we had a big false start problem, and Coach Arvo came in. When he came in the spring, yeah, that's one of the first things he told us that that's not going to be a part of our identity anymore. So, you know, we nipped that in the bud right after the scrimmage. Bill, was the speed you guys are going at, are you eliminating delay of game penalties? Have there been any delay of game penalties for the offense? Uh, not that I can remember, no. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to win the AFC North this year? <laughs> oh, uh, hopefully the Steelers. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. Hopefully the Steelers, but we'll see. Not a Browns fan? Uh, no, no, no. You know what I'm saying? Not <laughs> No, I don't don't lie. Uh, I hope the Browns do good, but I'm a Steelers fan, man. No, he, he said that the first day he got here. I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> but um, yeah. I'm not going to try to ruin any relationships with the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> good idea. Smart man. <laughs> Anything final for Ryan? Ryan, 